Hello and welcome to episode 53, guys. Uh, we're going to start with looking at our number one pick in the 2020 draft, 22 draft. He was a right end. Is he still a right end? Yes, he is. He is Ty Worlds. He was pretty phenomenal. Ten and a half sacks. He led the team in sacks. He played 815 downs on 12 in 12 games, so he didn't even play the whole season and had ten and a half sacks. This guy, this guy's got some, um, he's got some talent. He's gonna, he's gonna do good playing right end, uh, being only his second year now. Uh, I, I just have to give him an A plus for being, there you go, there's my second A plus. The defense for the Packers was pretty good. Uh, the next up we have we drafted in the second round two second round picks and we picked a right guard Who's not playing right guard anymore. He's probably playing left guard Isaac Highgrove played left guard. He was our starting left guard He didn't give up any sacks And he played in all the downs so he gets an A um, he'd get better grade if they played just a little bit better on the offensive line, but you can see that Buck Gruber and Isaac Hargrove here, they really helped the Packers' offense transition from the older veterans. So next up we drafted in the second round was another defensive tackle. The Marcus Dykes. And it appears that he did not have. Uh, I should stay, I always do that. A great rookie year. Let's put it that way. So, sorry you get an F for your failure to be a second round pick. Second round picks are tricky. They're tricky. Um, Blake Barron was our next one. He was a strong safety that we drafted. And he too got blanketed. So this is not good. This is two high-end draft picks that uh, just didn't pan out. We did not have a fourth round draft pick. We picked two running backs with our fifth and sixth draft pick. Fifth round and sixth draft pick. Sixth round draft pick. Yeah, couldn't get that out for the life of me. Uh, first one we drafted was Sloan here. And if we look at him, no stats. And Tasha Walker, no stats. So this draft choice, this um, draft class, two very solid beginning players, and then absolutely nothing afterwards. And I just pushed too far, sorry. So we're going to move on to um, our sixth round. We had two other six rounds and he was a cornerback and I can almost guarantee you that he has zero stats because he too was on the practice squad so we are just not this was a very poor just like the season we had two wide receivers we picked up as well Hoping to catch some lightning in the battle. We had uh, Quinton Ruffin. And let's take a look here with no stats. And Donald DeWalt. Hmm. And it would appear that Donald DeWalt did not make it through training camp. So he was cut in the first year. I don't remember doing that, but sometimes I miss them. And then we had Everett, a right outside linebacker. Maybe he's left. Oh, and he didn't make the team either. So there we go. We had to cut two of them. Our, our seventh round picks didn't make it, except for the last one who um, was our punter. Power punter that didn't really have a great average. 46 net pushbacks. 
This is a this is a C plus hunter in my mind. There we go. We finished our draft class, and uh, we can go see advance to the Super Bowl. Let's do that right now and see what happens. Should be pretty quick, I would say, because we hired a scout. A scout. There we go. So we got a scout. Who's in the Super Bowl? Who is it going to be? It's going to be the Saints or the Cowboys? Saints or the Cowboys? The Dallas Cowboys squeaked the win against the Saints. And the Jets beat Baltimore. So this is the two teams I said I didn't really want. So we have a Jets-Dallas Super Bowl. Um, I'm going, I'm going heavy Dallas. All right, well we've got a, a new Scott. Let's go to the Super Bowl week here. Oh, what does it say? Oh, it doesn't say that yet. So we have to advance to the off season. I wish you could. It would have had one more step in there to. Uh, allow you to uh, get the Super Bowl before you advance. So we are drafting 17th, 1st, 9th, 17th, 28th, 17th, 28th, 17th, 28th, 1st, 1st. Uh, wow, we have so many first picks that you don't even see the whole list of them. Oh, I need to do that. I need to do that before I move on. I need to look at my, my team roster and then we go to picks. So we got we got a bunch of fives and six and two sevens. So we have four number twos. Four number twos, one one on the seventeenth. Four number twos, two threes, two fours, two fives, a six and two sevens. And we get to trade one away. So we're gonna have a lot of picks. We gotta make sure that we have a lot of ammo for that second round. So I gotta look at just highlighting some second round players. And I'm gonna do that in the future. So I'll be back. So I was thinking that this section of the video would be about the Super Bowl. And precisely the two teams in the Super Bowl. So, which is not our team. Because we haven't been in the Super Bowl since 2017, 2016, which would have happened in 17. So we're gonna we're gonna check it out. We're gonna check out the playoff schedule here. It is the Jets at the Cowboys. We're gonna start with the Jets. Take a look at the Jets roster. And I kind of hope they have a they do upset the uh, going the wrong way. Uh, the Cowboys, but let's see. Their highest player is a halfback, Jonathan Rutledge, a 91 halfback. Superstar development, five years in the league. There you go. Um, 12 touchdowns, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. So let's let's do this. Let's uh, let's just start with their quarterback, um, Richard Russell Wong. So. Take a look at his stats, a quick development quarterback in the third year of the league. Uh, throwing 26 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. Another a big year there, 4,000 yards. Not bad, not bad. He ran the ball a little bit, I'm sure. There you go, a couple of touchdowns there. And uh, his backups, halfbacks, we looked at him and fullback. There's their wide receivers. We've got 380s and 369 and a 66, 269, 66. Um, let's just take a look at this guy's quick development, wide receiver. Four touchdowns this year. Okay, okay, okay. Tight ends. Hey, look at it, it's Richard Rogers. 
Still hanging on in the league here. 29 years old. He's the same age as uh, Brady Krobog. So, three touchdowns, 72 catches. See, way ahead is, yep. And uh, just quick looking. Hey, a real person in there, offensive line. Muhammad Wilkerson is still hanging out here. 32 years old. Superstar, 93 overall. Let's check out his sack totals. 14 and a half, 12 and 10, 9. There we go. That's pretty nice. Right end, Leonard Williams. That's what I did too. I moved him to uh, right end right away. Not quite as dominating as Muhammad Wilkerson. I just went too far back. Dang it. Sorry. Oh, yeah. There might be some lag. You might not actually see. I'm editing a video right now. So, a lot of, lot of uh, power required for this old computer. Bruce Gaston is their defensive tackle. Linebackers, Jordan Jenkins. Darian Lee. They were in a 3-4, so they're going to have two. Melvin Coleman. That guy's fast. That's a fast cornerback right there. Rookie year. Free safety. Malcolm Jenkins is still going at it. 74 speed. Calvin Pryor, 83 speed. And the team that they're facing... Probably could have gone a different way to do that, too. The team they're facing... Um, is the bane of this series. I mean, look at that. Oh. Something bad just happened. Ezekiel Elliott, Max Williams is a 92. It's amazing that they're able to do this. Salaries aren't really that bad. And Dylan Gunn's only got $12 million. Oh, no. So let's look at theirs. All right, Dylan Gunn, look at that. 93, 99, 93, 99, 99, 92, 89, 96, 70. So ridiculous. Injuries of 97. This is a bad man. It's a bad man. He just keeps winning. Fifth Pro Bowl, most valuable player. It's ridiculous. This guy's ridiculous. Dak Prescott is his backup. Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, wait, you know what? I want to go back real quick Oop. to uh, Dylan Gunn's stats. Let's just check out his stats for a second. 37 touchdowns, 8, 38, 14, 32, 10, 38, 8, uh, 42, 16. Interceptions went up, but jeez, look at that rating. This dude is amazing. And he ran the ball, hit another touchdown, 113 yards. I don't even know. The Jets are huge underdogs. Ezekiel Elliott, 13 touchdowns. He was averaging 6 yards a carry. Cause that offensive line is phenomenal. His fullback, he's so much better than his fullback. Des Bryant still in the game. Still doing things. Let's check out Des Bryant's stats. 72 touchdowns, almost a thousand yards. Better than any receiver that we had on our team. Des Bryant, killing it. Tight end. Look at Max Williams here. I'm, I'm really impressed with Max Williams. A lot more than I would have thought. Hit one reception in a 16. Look at that. It's phenomenal. It's because he got a great quarterback throwing him the ball. Look at these. He's only 29 years old. Leyland Collins. I mean, they're still, they're still relatively young. Left then Demarcus Lawrence. Let's take a look at Demarcus Lawrence here. 
you know, 18 sacks and 9, 16, 1, 12, 12 last year, or this year I should say. That's pretty phenomenal too. TJ McClure, two years, seven, three sacks this year. So Marcus Lawrence is definitely their their getter. Jalen Smith doing great. 91 overall for their linebackers and cornerbacks. Cornerbacks are kind of weak. Free safety is going to be Byron Jones. There you go. There you go. There's the two teams um, competing for the Super Bowl. So hit that next button next. And uh, we'll hit the off season. I think I got everything I wanted done. So here we go. Off season. Find out who won the Super Bowl and Jets. Dallas beat the Jets by three points. The Jets, they were they were in it to win it. Um, the Jets, they're uh, they're surprising because they were in the Super Bowl uh, three years ago. And they lost two. So there we go. The Cowboys finally get to the Super Bowl and they win it. Ugh, gross. It's almost as bad as the Seahawks winning it because nothing's worse than that. Excuse me. So, yep. Packer or the Cowboys beat the Jets. Dylan Gunn, huge game, four touchdowns, probably the MVP of the game. Ezekiel Elliott just killing them. No, nah, but look at Pinkett had a great game. Two passing touchdowns. The Jets are the only ones that had. Oh, no, that's because I have it on. So let's go back to the box score here and check it out. So the Jets came out to an early lead and then, or no, the, the Cowboys, I'm sorry, the Cowboys early lead and the Jets tried to come back, but it was too late. So Cowboys, it's just generally better. Jets turned the ball over three times. That was the killer right there. So there you go, that's it. Um, we got 10 players that we're not going to resign. Now let's take a quick look before we go to the 2023 season at the retirements. James Carpenter retired after losing in the Super Bowl. Kobe Fleener retired. Kurt Coleman. Jerry Smith Harrison. Harrison Smith. Cameron Hayward retires. Doug Baldwin retires. Oh, wow, look at this. Doug Baldwin, K.J. Wright, and Earl Thomas retires. Mason Crosby retired after being released, obviously, because he was a New York, New England Patriot. Dustin Pughes, Janoris Jenkins retires. Chris Harris Jr. retired. Matt Ryan retired. Kirk Cousins retired. Pat McPhee, T.Y. Hilton. Travis Kelsey retires. Steven Hauschka. Demarius Thomas retires, Von Miller, Terry Hughes, Nick Folk, Sean Payton retired, Pete Carroll retired, and Jack Del Rio retired. Did you not see Aaron Rodgers look like he's coming back another year, at least so far? He's not retired. We'll find out shortly. I have to admit that I thought Aaron, that, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Randall Cobb are going to retire, and neither of them did. So Randall Cobb really dropped down. He's 80 overall, 33 years old. Um, that's not good. Brady Kropog had his first big down year. Uh, release, juke move, catch and traffic. Uh, let's see, Calvin Zamata. One of our draft picks. He got a lot of getting olders. Blake Martinez got some getting olders. Aaron Rodgers, who's 39 now, got some getting olders. Um, his stiff arm is down to 12. But, I mean, really, doesn't look too bad. Injury, no problem. The rest of these are just moving. Uh, we'll have to see about what to do about Haha. I was talking about moving into him to uh, strong safety. 
TJ Lang is getting older. 35, 32, 31, 29, Brock, 30, 25, or 27, 2. Just got worse. So we don't have much salary cap space. Um, let's look at the salaries here. Four. So if you look at this, the only one that would actually save us any real money is cutting TJ Lang, our right tackle. Um, the rest of them, I mean, it really wouldn't make that big of a difference. So, um, yeah, there's no real big, huge savings other than TJ Lang. We have 18 million, 18 two in salary cap space, but, um, we got 14 rookies, so... Almost a $12 million, uh, sorry, rookie reserve there. Um, this is not going to be a free agency splash season because I have a hard time with the salary cap. But look at the free agents. We can make some offers on some free agents. We have uh, $6 million. The Saints quarterback wants a six-year, $153 million deal. Which is actually a little cheaper than Aaron Rodgers' deal because his is three years, eighty-one million. I have a lot invested in my quarterbacks. Yikes! Very expensive. Marcus Peters wants a one-year, thirteen million dollar deal. Oh my goodness, these we're just not going to be able to afford any of these high-end. Players. Ryan Chazier. And it's just going to be kind of a drafty kind of class. So I'm going to take a look at this and uh, I'll get back to you if I make any offers. Hey guys. So here we go. Here's my board. Um, I took a two player penalty for reviewing too many players on my draft board last year. I had 30 going into the draft, but I realized I actually had 33 or 32, so I, I'm only going to have 28 on my draft board this year with 14 picks, so that should be interesting. Um, I do not believe that this guy will be there by the time I draft uh, 17th, and one of these guys should be here, so it's either going to be a defensive tackle or this cornerback. I'm really hoping this cornerback is available. Um, need cornerbacks so I'm hoping that he's available I'll take the defensive tackles one of the defensive tackles if I have to uh, right going down the list here on the second rounds that I selected none of them are draftable in the second round except for one and um, he is not he's a kind of a big speed receiver I guess because he's kind of strong or something I don't know um, Six one, so I'm taking him with my first pick in the first, second round, unless one of these defensive tackles are still left. But I don't really need a defensive tackle more than I need a wide receiver, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to trade away one of my second rounds, and then the other two second rounds. I don't know, because I don't have any third rounds either, or fourth rounds. So this is my draft list. We're going to draft some of these, you know, green players around earlier than normal or whatever. So this will be my fourth, and this will be a fifth, and this will be a sixth, and a sixth. And uh, these will be my sevenths kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, so and then we'll, we'll, we'll try to leave the Reds alone. Though I've had some success with Reds. I've had some big failures, too. So this is the end of episode 53. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe. And... Uh, Watch the series. Thanks. Bye.